I've got a confession to make. I've been using an insulin pump for about six months now, and it hasn't really gone that well. But you see, rewind back to 2018, and I was making all sorts of promises about how this pump was gonna change my life. I was gonna be the perfect pumper, but unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way. But I think it's important to be open and honest about the bad times as well as the good. So get ready, because I'm about to offload a whole load of confessions onto you. And for those that don't know, let me bring you up to speed with what an insulin pump actually is. So an insulin pump is a small electronic device which is used by people with type 1 diabetes to drip feed our body with the regular insulin it needs throughout the day and night. The device is attached to our bodies via a thin tube which is connected to a cannula which is inserted into the skin. This is how the insulin gets into the body which often means no more injections or fewer at least and generally, I found this myself, better management of blood sugar levels. But you see, the thing is with insulin pumps, they require a lot of planning and preparation. And that was the bit that I wasn't so good at. And here's the proof of that. So my first few months with the insulin pump went swimmingly. You know, I was making progress at the gym for the first time in like three years and I wasn't restricting my diet. I had a peanut butter sandwich for the first time in what felt like forever. So, you know, life was good. But then I made my first oopsie, and I'm ashamed to say that alcohol was involved. Guess who's never drinking again? This guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungover. I'm not at home. I'm staying somewhere in London, and my insulin pump ran out just, just, just ran out, just went to zero. It's the first time that this has happened. I don't know why I was so silly and thought that it wouldn't run out. So there's that, I've run out of insulin today and it's really, really silly. And my insulin pump is beeping away across the room, not letting me sleep. I've ripped it out, taken it out, because it's got no insulin, so why I'm gonna have it dangling from me. But yeah, it's over there, beeping away at me, and I can't get it to stop. <laughs> so stick around until the end of the video and we'll be hearing some of your confessions. But for me, that was a lesson learned there. So I've got this irrational fear that only comes out when you know, I've had a few drinks. I'm basically scared of having a hypo and not waking up to correct it. And our healthcare professionals, as great as they are, really try to scare us when they talk about alcohol and diabetes, don't they? But on the topic of not dying, which for me at least requires insulin, you think I'd remember to give myself some, wouldn't you? Here we go again. So I do this a little bit too often. I get busy and I forget to press all the buttons on my pump. So I've just tested my blood sugar. It's back to front there, but you can see just about that it's 18.3. Now I have my lunch about maybe three, just under three hours ago. And I had a sandwich with white bread and then I had tortilla chips and some guacamole. So not a low carb lunch by any, um, any, any means. But I think what happened is, is I got in, so I basically have a working lunch break. There's not a lot of time to, you know, sit and have a leisurely lunch doing the job that I do. And I just I just forgot to complete the process because the AccuCheck Insight, it's very slow and it requires a lot of button pressing to give you the dose of insulin. So I think what's happened is I think I thought I got through it. I thought I did the process, but didn't got distracted and completely forgot about it. This this has happened quite a few times, but I think since I'm documenting my pump fails, my pump mistakes. I should talk about it because that, I mean, that's a pretty critical error, not giving yourself insulin when you eat a very carby lunch. That one right there happens a few more times than I'm willing to admit, but when we're busy, I'm sure we can forgive ourselves if our medical technology just can't keep up. But we can't dwell on that too much because we've got many more of these to get through. And my next failure comes with a bit of a positive note because after my first incident where a bit too much beer caused me to rip out my pump, I learned a lesson and I planned ahead should it ever happen again which it did. So I'm just in Paddington Station now, about to travel back to Bristol, and I have a confession to make. So we are unfortunately back on these orange pens because 
I have done it again. I have left unprepared and um, I'm not wearing my pump right now because I got a little bit drunk and when I get a little bit drunk I have this irrational fear that my pump is going to kill me in the night so sometimes I rip it out and this time when I ripped it out I ripped out the battery and I ripped out the vial of insulin and I couldn't find the battery again so my pump effectively until I get back to Bristol doesn't work so thank god I bought this this orange insulin pen um, and that is essentially what's keeping me alive right now. So, uh, this is a, a note for Jamie in the future to not be so silly and maybe carry extra, 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 extras so this doesn't happen again. But I'm about to eat a superfood burrito with the help of some insulin that I carry, thank God, as a backup. Okay, I'm actually a little bit embarrassed at how much these are because of my going out, but let's go to a time when the fail wasn't so serious, but it was pretty painful. Today is sight change day, and I feel so, so stupid because I myself put this cannula on. I put it on my body, so I should have realized that it was gonna be difficult to get off. Let me show you. Excuse the belly. So it's here, but as you can see, I got a little bit of uh, fur here. So, <laughs> the actual uh, cannula is stuck to actual pubes. Are they pubes that are on your belly? Either way, it's hair, and now that is all glued together, and I've got to rip it off. And I've started ripping it off now, so the cannula probably doesn't work, so I can't keep it in and save it till later. I'm supposed to be meeting a friend at a pub bar thing in literally 40 minutes. I need to do this now and you have the pleasure of watching. Here we go. Oh, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt, this is gonna hurt. Right, okay. One, two, three. Ah. Oh. That was rough. That was really rough. I'm a bit of a wuss, aren't I? Look, it's a bit raw. Oh, look at that. Look how red that is. Sore. <laughs> well, time to put another one in. And that was actually so painful that I now put my cannulas in my side. So I definitely learned my lesson there. But the next pump fail is one that's happened so many times. And I'm not including every time in this video because it would be days long. This one, though, was especially annoying because it meant that I couldn't eat. So, I didn't think I'd be doing another pump fail this quick, but we are just heading to the food hall in a shopping centre, and I'm really hungry. Are you hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry. You could eat right now. I can. I can't, though, because this morning, wait. What should be there? An insulin pump. What isn't there? an insulin pump. I left the house without my insulin pump. How ridiculous is that? It's dumb! So, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't end there. So we went back to my house mm -hmm. to go and pick up the insulin pump. Didn't take the keys. Yeah. So, try as I might, fate just doesn't want me to have any insulin doesn't today. Doesn't want you to survive today. So just watch out for if I'm getting a bit sleepy or I'm passing out or anything like that because um, this is an issue, this is an issue, but it's important because we're proving that we're not perfect. Yeah, I forgot to put the bloody thing in and that happens actually a little less now. So I guess, you know, from documenting my mistakes, I'm learning from them. But the real reason that I decided to share all of these mistakes with anyone who decided that they wanted to view them is because I think it's important to share the reality of life with type 1 diabetes. So, a few weeks ago, I found myself on Instagram, scrolling through picture after picture of people on surfboards, on mountains, on beaches, showing off their expensive CGMs and boasting about their perfect blood sugar. And then I saw one solitary post where someone was talking about their blood sugar not going the way that they expected. And they were being raw and honest. And that made me feel really good about myself. 
So I think we should all be making an effort to share with each other the times when we go wrong. I think we've got a great hive mind in the Type 1 Diabetes online community. And what I mean by that is that we all club together to help share our knowledge and our experiences to help each other out. So, I needed a bit of emotional support whilst making this video. So a while back on Instagram, I asked for your confessions. So I went on Instagram and asked you guys to share a time when you failed or made a mistake with type 1 diabetes. And I'm just going to read a few out. So PhD Pritchard said, countless times it's difficult to be perfect all the time. And you know what? That's so true. I think I'm proving that in this video. The David J. Scott said, I had pizza and didn't bolus correctly for it and my sugar spiked really high. That is, you know, almost every time that I had pizza myself. Ugh. Do you know, I love pizza as well. I really, really love it. And actually, I was gonna make a video on this. It's a pizza recipe without any carbs or at least very, very few carbs. So if you'd like to see that, do let me know. Katie Ashford said, injecting 25 units of the wrong insulin when I was tired. So ate three slices of toast and six yogurts. It's always quite satisfying to correct a mistake like that, isn't it? Yes. Go you, Katie, you eat them yogurts and you eat those totes, but watch how much insulin you're giving yourself. And finally, Monique Hasney said, putting full sugar Coca-Cola on cornflakes when Hypo didn't know what I was doing. It worked. Sure, it did work. Cornflakes and Coca-Cola. What a glucose hit that is. Thank you guys for sharing all of those. It's, it's a brave thing to own up mistakes. And there were some more serious ones that I didn't read out because I don't want to be poking fun at people's misfortune. But those two should be spread and shared because it's all going to help break down the stigma and allow us all to feel better when we're having our own bad days. So I think what we should do is, of course, share your good times. If you're winning with diabetes, you deserve a pat on the back and a million likes. But every now and again, share your bad times on social media too. Social media is a really powerful thing. And if you can say, oops, I forgot to bowl so my blood sugar is really high, we can help take away that stigma that we all have inside of ourselves and make us all feel a little bit better about ourselves. So go on, go to the comment section of this video right now and confess to something. I don't care what it is, it doesn't even have to be diabetes related, go and confess to something. And then people can return to this video when they need a bit of a pick me up. We can all laugh at our mistakes. But that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please do go and leave that comment in the comment box below. Also give me a like. I'd really like some more likes on my channel. So yeah, one of those would be great. But thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.